Welcome to I-95 Sports Podcast alongside Lewis Schaefer. I'm Tim Hoffmeister. This is formerly known as Monday Night Lights, but we're going into podcast form. We are moving on to the next stage of the podcast, and hopefully, like the name, hopefully, like the new podcast, starting something new. Yes. Um, so basically, the whole idea of this podcast, I-95, Philly guy myself, Lewis, big, big New York guy, um, even though you live in PA. But yes. we won't we won't get to that. And trust the process. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's going to be a podcast basically with the roots from New York and Philly in that kind of perspective. Um, we're going to look at it from like what our teams are doing, how they're doing better. Obviously, there'll be a lot of bets and banter about New York versus Philly, and then at the end, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit of having a a poster child of the I-95 sports podcast, the guy that played both for New York and Philly. Um, there were some names getting thrown out and blasts from the past, but we'll get to that a little later. Um, first, we'll start about the uh, the NBA draft, as it was going to be more of a conversation, and then all of a sudden, the process trusters, Philadelphia 76ers, collars, Brian Colangelo, he trades up from number three. To number one, we grabbed the best player in the draft, who I thought was the best player in the draft since, I don't know, since probably since November. Probably yeah, I mean, I remember talking on the, the air when we were at school. I mean, it was like January, and I was like, Markel Fultz, man, he is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I just think he's he's the best player in the draft, and I think the Sixers just won the draft based off of that pick. There was a couple other teams. I mean, I like what, obviously, not so much drafting, but what Minnesota was able to do. I mean, how could you not love that? They fleeced Chicago. Um, I like the Mavericks pickup. I won't get to them, but, I mean, the, the false pick was really nice. Um, you know, really does. It gives the Sixers that, you know, four-headed monster to grow now with uh, him and Bede Simmons and, Sarge, so it should be interesting if they can all stay healthy. They're going to be a force. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, we'll talk about the Knicks, and then I want to talk about the team I like to pick on the most. Um, is this going to be another, um, you know, Steph Curry incident where you guys could have had him? You guys pick Frank Nilakinen. Is that how I, I think I pronounced it right? Uh, Nilakina. I don't even know yet. Yeah. But- <laughs> had, had enough time to prep. But, I mean, you, you see some of the guys left on the board, Monk, Dennis Smith Jr., Donovan Mitchell, yeah. and you sit there wonder, and now, of course, you get pick a guy that fits a triangle, and now you don't have the triangle I anymore. The triangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm interested to see how this pans out. Um, you know, I think there's a lot to Nidic. N- 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 Nitkalina, Nitalikina, however the hell you pronounce this name. Um, Frank N, it's just going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, or please bring back Derek Rose, because Rose is a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Smith obviously had the knee issue go- before he went to NC State. What worries me there is that what if there's more athleticism there that he wasn't able to to kind of showcase, A, on a bad team at NC State, and two, coming back from that injury. Um, you know, perhaps the one that hurts me the most that he was still on the board is Monk. I wanted Monk. Um, you know, of all the Knicks problems, one of the worst ones was that we had to play Courtney Lake and Ron Baker at the two guard. Um, yeah, so I really did want Monk. Uh you know, I figured if they could go into the season with uh, Rose, Monk, either Mello or Lance Thomas, depending, uh, Porzingis, and then when Noah got back from the suspension, he can start shooting his free throws two-handed again. Uh, but I, do, I like the pick. I mean, I think it, you know, it saves them cap space in the long term, not having to, probably not having to re-sign Derrick Rose now. Um, you know, like you said, it is going to be interesting now. 
he was drafted because he fit the triangle, and then he was drafted Thursday, today's Thursday. So six days later, the guy who drafted him gets fired. Um, so that'll be interesting. But I do think he is good enough of a prospect to be able to uh, get get with it rather quickly in the NBA. As much as you're loving the Sixers in the process, you still are loving the Knicks because you just talked yourself into this pick. Dennis Smith Jr. is going to be a star. Pick and rolls with him and Hernan and Gomez or him and Porzingis would have been awesome. They're going to be awesome with him and former yeah. Sixer Nerlens Noel. So Future former Sixer Marco Fultz? Yeah. <laughs> um, sadly, you guys missed out on Dennis Smith Jr. Well, not sadly. Sadly for you. Not so much me. Um, let me look at some of the other picks. You got um, my boy, I believe it's pronounced Anzeds Pesechniks. Ah, uh, yeah, big P. <laughs> so, I mean, he was uh, he was something. I thought maybe it was Josh Hart there. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what. He, you ever see that video of the high schooler, and it was like the seven foot five, like twelve year old. And, like, how yeah. awkward he runs and how, like, lanky he is. Yeah. This is, Pesetnik is, like, the grown-up version of him. Like, <laughs> he still has no meat on his bones. It's just skin and bone. I mean, he doesn't run. He, like, he runs pretty well, and he's got an okay shot. But I don't know. Like, I'm fine with the draft and stash. Like, he'll come over a couple years, whatever. Um, but I don't know why. You, do you, is it that big of a deal to trade up for him at that time? I mean, yeah, I didn't like the trade up for him either. I mean, I guess it's an insurance policy because Embiid's injuries, and we all hope that M- and Okafor isn't here for like a longer time. But I mean, I can't hate the pick because I don't know the guy, and what from what I've seen, he looks pretty good, and from what I've heard, he looks pretty good. But hopefully, his rebounding gets better because from what I hear, a seven-two guy, not very good rebounder. So, and I don't even know how you just usually grab the ball because you're right next yeah, to the you board. Should, you should just be there. You're yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I did kill for that. But, all right, and then the Knicks made two more picks. I know the Sixers made more picks. They traded them. They stashed them. Jonah Bolden, Australian. <laughs> we, we, got, we got the big three of Australians. We got Brett Brown, we, <laughs> Brett Brown, Jonah Bolden, and Ben Simmons. <laughs> uh, but when you look at the Knicks, uh, they got um, – Damian Dotson from Houston. Um, that was from Chicago. Shooting guard. I don't know if you've looked at these prospects at all. They were late, late yeah, second I, round. I, I haven't really looked into it. I know uh, like Dotson's got some off-court issues right now that he's got to get cleared up. Um, I mean, I'm not against it. At this point, I think the writing's on the wall. Knicks are going to be bad again next year. Um, yeah, no. They might as well, you know, play guys like Damian Dotson, you know, just like they played Justin Holiday for a large chunk of the season this year. Justin Holiday like, is a star. He is a star, and he's going to cash it in free agency. Listen, if I if if I ever run into money, we're gonna I'm gonna buy a team. And we're, build around Justin Holiday. We're we're gonna get a team. We're gonna build around Justin Holiday, Zoran Dragic. <laughs> All these, Seth Curry. Yep, it's going to be, the team's going to be so good. Oh, yeah. That'll have to be a franchise on 2K later. <laughs> Let's do uh, it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I like the Dotson pick. I think it's, you know, he's an interesting pro. I mean, he's, like I said, he's got the off-court issue. Um, if that gets cleared up, he'll play. I mean, like I said, we played Ron Baker last year, so... He'll get playing time and it'll work out. I was upset. I did want Dylan Brooks, and he went to 45 there. So both picks that are going to be on the Knicks this year, I have a problem with who went after them. Um, I did want Brooks. I mean, with the, the rumors around Mello, I wanted them to get you know someone to play the three because you know it's one of those things. Like it's like the process. Like play Robert Covington. Because fuck Jason Richardson. He's old as shit. We know what he is. Like, I'd rather have Dylan Brooks play and than Lance Thomas. Um, 
But yeah, I think it'll be he'll play a large chunk of the season because I mean, just in how they got minutes last year. So. Yeah, I mean that's what you have to do when you're bad and you don't have a ton of picks. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I mean that's just how it is. And then I mean there were some guys left on the board. Sedarius Thornwell, I think he's just a A plus score. Um, Sterling Brown ended up going to the Sixers. We officially haven't traded him yet. Hope we don't. Really like Sterling Brown. Yeah. Um, and then you look at the 58th overall pick, where at this point you just it's all draft and stash. Oh yeah. And I don't even know how to pronounce this guy's name. He's Serbian. Um, I, I think this might be easier than Nidalekina. I think it's Yaramaz. Yeah, but his first name it's like two names in one. Ogden Yaramaz. Ogden Yaramaz. So point guard from um, Serbia. <laughs> point guard from Serbia. He played on <laughs> he played on Megalex, which is uh, Timotej Luwalu Cabarro's team. So former and, uh, point guard. Yeah, so I mean, you got a good team there. Um, I don't know what his plan is to come over at this point when he's that late in the second round, unless he's Manu, probably not going to come over and do anything. Yeah. Um, but another point guard, foreign point guard for you. So, um, basically, the draft overall, I guess we'll just give a grade for each team. Um, I'm just going to give an A- minus to the Sixers. Love Fultz. Pesetniks, he's fine. Um, I wish we would keep Evans and Brown because of the new two-way contracts. But overall, Markel Fultz, best player in the draft. A- minus because I'm petty. And then for the Knicks, I mean, I'm going to give you guys a C. I just thought there were some good good players on the board that you could have took at that point. Even with taking the draft and stash, um, Yarmez at the 58th pick, like, you need players at this point. Yeah. Just go after a guy. Take a flyer on someone. I don't even know who, was, who a free agent was, but, um, like, go for it. Um, I thought the Darius Thornwell, A-plus score, go after him. The way he's changed himself from... The beginning of the season to the end of the tournament. Yeah. Guys that catch lightning in the bottle like that, I think you got to go after him. I, I mean, what's wrong with that? Like, I mean, you see a guy like um, uh, Kirkpatrick, who I think he was with the Sixers for a little. Now he's with the Nets. Played well last year. He was one of those guys. You obviously have a guy like Kemba Walker. He had a higher status before the tournament. Um, but, I mean, he's been very successful. Ryan Boatwright. Still in the G League now. I think he can be a good NBA player. And then you got like a Th- Sedarius Thornwell. So I thought he was a guy that he could have had. Um, I mean, a guy looking like. Overall, I think they did okay. I'm going to give him a C because one, the Knicks, and two, because it wasn't really a great draft anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say around the C as well. Um, you know, could have, like I said, could have been higher. I mean, twice they kind of took flyers on guys when they could have had, I don't want to say a sure thing, especially when you're talking second-round picks. Um, but, I mean, if you're going to trade Carmelo Anthony or buy him out, whatever the hell you're going to do, and you have two second-round picks and take a shooting guard and a point guard, and then the next pick's, after you are Dylan Brooks, small forward, and Jerron Blossom game, small forward. Like, I think they should have picked up one of them if they're so intent on, like I said, either buying out, especially at that time. Phil was still there, so I'm shocked they didn't do it because he couldn't stand Mello. Um, you know, wasn't over an exit interview, but <laughs> take what we can get. Um, but, um, you know, and, and even with Nidalekina, you know, Smith's still on the board, Monk's still on the board, Mitchell's still on the board, where, like, you know, Mitchell's not going to be a superstar, but he'll be a quality player, you know, you know, you even look, I mean, obviously, they're not going to take one of these guys at eight, but, you know, Derek White, Josh Hart, like, we had two second round picks, and, like, we have some more second rounders down the road just from, you know, blowing up the team every other year. Um, you know, like you couldn't get into the 
back end of the first somehow to get a Josh Hart if you're going to take Damian Dotson. So, I mean, the middle, like, I mean, obviously, if you rewind five minutes, you could tell I could talk myself into the middle Aquina pick. Um, but the other two, I mean, Serbian guy, he was drafting stash, fine. You know, we're the Knicks, we could sign some vet that just wants to play in New York for some unknown reason. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but again, the Dotson pick, I like it because he will get minutes and we'll see what he can do, but I would have rather had Brooks if they're going to move on from Mello. Yeah, I mean, and you look at, like, obviously the guy who was running your team, not that great. One thing I do want to yeah. ask is, you think he'll do an ex- exit interview, Phil Jackson? I think Porzingis should get mad at him if he doesn't show up. Yeah, I think Porzingis <laughs> should give him the interview. I think he should, yeah. Kill, kill two birds with one stone. It'll just be some banter back and forth. Um, <laughs> but you look at the, like, I know we're just New York, Philly, but I just wanted to comment on the Clippers. This is before we knew the Chris Paul trade. Yeah. And now, even after the Chris Paul trade, I like it better. They didn't have a pick. And then all of a sudden you see, okay, what are they going to do? They buy Juwan Evans from the Sixers, yep. who I think is electric. I thought he could have went first round. I think if he stays another year, he's late first round yeah. next year. And then they buy Sedarius Thornwell from the Bucks. You got a point guard and shooting guard there that are extremely young. Um, Sedarius Thornwell stayed all four years. Evans went left after his sophomore year. I think they can be real good players, and this is what Jerry West brings to the table. I mean, listen, he got Draymond. He got some good second rounders. He made Ian Clark an okay player. So, I mean, I really like how he's going out and he's saying, listen, I don't got a pick, but I got cash to use, and I'm going to get two very electric players because, let's be honest, Juwan Evans, he's he's raw, but he can re- if he puts it together, I think he could be a big-time NBA player. So Darius Thormel, great on defense. He'll, give it, he'll be able to play right away in this league just – based on defense. Yeah. So, hats off to them. Yes. And then, I mean, to get Beverly in a pick, too, yesterday, in the deal, and Decker, who I, I mean, he's not going to be anything special, but I do like his game. He will play, because I don't think the Clippers have had a small forward ever. Um, Are you kidding me, dude? Luke Richard Mamba Amute? Uh, Luke Richard. Wait, <laughs> wait, did he play for the Knicks? Um... He's played for, like, ten teams, so he's got to make yeah. our list. He definitely has to make it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, aside, aside from Luke Richard Mbamute and 40-year-old oh. Paul Pierce, I don't think the Clippers have ever had a small forward, so Decker will play right away, too. He did so. not play for the Knicks until they signed him in free agency. Oh, man. I'm calling that. Ugh. He shot 39% from three last year. This man... Are there any roads that connect Philadelphia and New Orleans so Hollis Thompson could be the poster boy? Yeah. I mean, I went to New Orleans if you want to stretch it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, what are we gonna talk? I don't even know what we're talking about. You got me all excited about Luke Richard. <laughs> the Clippers. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I mean, they're, I don't, I would be, I think they'll bring back Blake because I think Blake wants to be the guy. That's fine. I think they'll be a seven seed. If they keep the band together, I think Reddick's gone. Um, but I do like those pick those not really picks, but trades. And I think that's what Jerry West will bring. I don't think he'll be able to make a team to beat Golden State right away, but yeah. can anyone? Probably not. And, and, and I mean, credit to CP3. I mean, he could have just walked to Houston and, I mean, ultimately, like, told the Clippers and told Jerry West, like, hey, I'm going there. Like, get something for me. Yeah, and also, because he wants to be there, but also he can get five years, two hundred million still because he opted in technically. Yeah, he so. uh, he totally ocean elevened the CBA. Okay. <laughs> All right, but let's talk about some free agents. As we talked about, Blake opted out; he's a free agent, and then you got, of course, Chris Paul who opted in, got the trade for just a bunch of different contracts: Lou Will, Montrez Harrell, just enough to make it. Even so, they didn't have to worry about the uh, waiting for the new league year or whatever. So we'll go over who do we like for 
the Sixers and who we like for the Knicks. And it's funny because now at this point, it used to be when we talked, the Knicks were looking for f- veteran fillers because they were just kind of, they had good enough talent to get an eight seed. Let's see maybe if we can catch lightning in a bottle. Now it's what young guys are going to take flyers on for the Knicks. And then the Sixers are saying, all right, what veterans can we fill gaps in for? Yeah. So we'll start off with the – who do you want to start off with? Uh, let's start for the Sixers. Awesome. So there's two names that I really like. And on Twitter I've kind of made them a little obvious. But who do you like for the Sixers? J.J. Redick. Um, you know, it just makes sense. I mean, they've been playing Soros for the last, what, three years since the pick swap trade? Um, you just got to play him because of the pick swap trade. Play, well, the, the pick swap's done, so you cannot play him now. Um, what his, his jersey should not have a name, and his number should just be the arrows going the opposite ways that are parallel to each other. No, they need they need to reti- unretire three so he can have three for the pick that they got to the pick swap. <laughs> no, nah, I like the arrows. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like since that trade, they've been playing Sauce. Um, Redick is a similar type of player, a little bit more consistent, um, and you really you just need shooters at this point. I mean, you have Simmons, you have Embiid. I mean, Embiid can shoot three, too. But, um, you know, you need a two-guard, you know. Butler's gone. Clay Thompson ain't going anywhere. Um, so you might as well, you know, get J.G. Redick for a couple of years and see what you could do. Because he he's just going to sit in the corner and Ben Simmons will give him the ball and knock down shots. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. There's three names that I look at. Um... Obviously, we also need a backup center at this point. Fingers crossed that... Um, Come on, you have a guy who can go for 20 and 10 in his pajamas. That's what I'm saying. I want this man to not be behind the best player in the league in Embiid. <laughs> I want the man that can get 20 and 10 in his sleep. He don't even have to roll out of bed yet. In his sleep, I want him to show his stuff on maybe another Eastern Conference team that we can jump eventually. <laughs> but um I mean so I have three names and then I'll get my center. There's not really many center names or power forward names. There's some that I would enjoy because just because of their names like JaVale McGee. Yeah. But I'll try and find some guy that actually makes sense for the uh Sixers. Um but I really like JJ Redick, Andre Iguodala and um KCP, Cadavius Caldwell Pope. Obviously, you got 46 mil in cap space. You're not going to be able to get all of them. KCP is going to be tough because he's restricted, so you're going to have to blow him out of the water and then make the Pistons go, oh, crap, we can't get him back because we're giving 16 mil to Tobias Harris. Good old... And like 20 mil to Reggie Jackson. Yeah, good old Stan Van Gundy there. So, I mean, I think J.J. Redick, I'm trying to think it's tough with the new... Um, new salary cap always raising. It's tough to gauge the player's value at this point. Yeah. So I'm thinking J.J. Reddick's probably a 15 mil a year player. Yeah, I'd say around that. I think Iggy can get 15 to 20. And I think KCP, you're going to have to give KCP. I don't know what the max is, but I'm pretty sure you're going to have to max him out. Yeah, probably. So... And then I think it's all about the years because I'm thinking when's M beat up, Simmons is up in M beats after this year. Yeah, so I want to re-sign him ASAP. There's talk of that. Colangelo, if you lowball him, I will march on Wall or march on Wells Fargo Center. <laughs> um, so I would think like M beat if you can get him for like five for twenty or four for twenty, sign me up. Or trade him for a fake draft pick. Yeah, definitely. Because then you got that guy that's 20 and 10 right behind him. 20 and 10. (laughs) So I'm thinking, J.J. Redick, I'm thinking three years maybe. I think that. Yeah, I'd say if they can get him for three years, I mean, then even. I would say, I mean, you still have Sauce, you still have Timote. And and if Corkmaz comes over this year, you know, you have enough shooting guards then. Um, and I mean, you start to look at it. 
I would draw the line at Reddick. I mean, honestly, if you're running out a lineup every night of Fultz, Reddick, Simmons, or, or suppose, I, I think it would be better if it's Covington, Simmons, and B than Sarge off the bench. One hundred percent agree with you. Um, but I mean, either way, would you do that? Whether it's Rock starting or Sarge starting, you know, you have a good six man, um, and then. I mean, it leaves that door open a little bit for, you know, you don't want to Pistons yourself and give max contracts to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think if they can land Reddick for 15, 16, 17 mil, have 30 left over, you know, I think they'll get him beat on a team friendly deal considering in his whole career, he's played 31 games. And was robbed of the rookie of the year. Um, you know, Sarge just came over. Simmons is only going into his second year. You know, and they have to pay Covington too. But I mean, he—I I don't think he's going to get max money on the free agent market next year. Um, you know, you have Fultz for four years. You have Timote for two more. You know, three more, including this season. Um, you know, depending on how long Cork Mass signs for, you kind of keep your options open by just signing Reddick um, in the event that, you know, we go through this season and next season and Butler's like, I can't do this in Minnesota. Or, you know, Clay Thompson. Or, um, I mean, Chris Paul will be. You know, 34, 35, by the time Harden hits free agency, he might not want to play with him again. You know, you can, you can keep your options open, and the Sixers have built up enough depth through the process where they can just sign Reddick because he's a starting caliber two guard, and then just roll with what you've kind of built up over the yeah. last few years. I mean, I, I agree with you. I like Reddick because, I mean, he's historically right now, he's the best shooter of all time, percentage wise. Yeah. Um, he ranks above Reggie Miller, and I would actually like to see Lawalu play the three a little. Um, he's a very long player. I think he could play the three in a smaller lineup. I would like that. I don't want to block Cork Maz, um, but I think as also you can get Sauce some time with the ball in his hands. I think he's improved mightily with that. If not, I think Sauce may not be making the team. Yeah. Um, with Iggy, I mean, I just hate it how it ended. I yeah. love I love Iggy. I would love to give him three years, 15 to 20 mil. Um, Knicks have to call up the 87ers and get Nate back. Yeah, really. <laughs> him, Baron Davis, and who else? Is who else played in the 80, uh, in the G League? Who else? Uh, there was someone else trying to make a comeback. I can't think yeah, of his name right now. Had a lot of them this year. Yeah. Um, but no, I really like him as a leader, as just being. I just hate how his time ended in Philly. I need him back. I long for an Iggy reunion. I want him to retire a sixer. Probably not going to happen, but I miss Iggy. And then KCP scares me because it'll be a max. It'll probably be five years. And I think it could work with the way our contracts are set up. I mean, you're going to have to sign Embiid. Embiid, Simmons, and Saric. You're all going to have to resign them by the time KCP is still on the team. And the whole money thing. I know you got the bird rights and whatever, but it still scares me because they'll be on the team so you can give them the ultra max and I don't want to hamstring our bench because I think we got some pieces that could become good players. I think Lawalu, I really like him the way he played last year. No one expected it. Um, what's Cork Maz going to be um, if you do end up keeping 20 and 10? So, I mean, Rashawn Holmes, I don't know what he's going to be able to get on the market. He's a he's a fun electric player. So, I just worry about KCP hamstringing us because you're going to have to max him out five years. Or four years. I don't know what the max is. Um, I don't know how many years the max is. I think you guys would be able to give him four. Okay, so yeah. Because you're not the Pistons. I think the Pistons are able to give him five. So, if we can only give him four, it makes me feel a little better about it. But those are three names I really want to look at, um, and then you look at power forward centers. Who's going to back them? Who's going to come back us up? I mean, these names are not exciting. 
I mean, you got the GOAT, JaVale McGee. Um, I mean, David Lee. Dwayne Dedman. Aaron Josh Gibson. Aaron Baines, Chris Anderson, Lavoy Allen. Like, these guys, not totally exciting. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they'll bring a guy in, an undrafted free agent, or a guy that isn't even good enough to make the free agent list and yeah. try him out. But definitely, I, I, I think you need a shooter. <coughs> and you need a center power forward to add some depth because I think the 20 and 10 man, he'll be, uh, he'll be on his way out. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, just for his, his sake. For, for his sake. Because the Sixers are worse off without him. I mean, why would you want to get rid of a guy like that? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have a little time here. So I'm going to go through... Something I enjoy to do, I'm going to go through the media votes for Rookie of the Year. Okay. And I'm going to call out everyone who did not vote for <laughs> Embiid slash Sarich. I don't even think, I think Sarich got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight first place votes, so... Oh well, this is a long list. You got so he didn't do too bad, but it's a lot Brogdon and Embiid. So let's see. It's all alphabetical order by first name. So we have Anthony Slater, Bay Area News Group. He's just mad that Embiid's the only center better than JaVale McGee. Vote at Brogdon. Joke. Bill Orem, Orange County Register. Never even heard of that paper. Why do you have a vote? Buddy Heald finished third. Joke. Bill Simmons, the ringer. Bill Simmons is mad because Danny Ainge refuses to make a trade. <laughs> Danny Ainge is a bitch. Brent Barry, Turner Sports, I guess. He vote Brogdon, Sarich, and is that Deontay, Jamal Murray. Not even the best Murray in the draft. Jesus. His vote should just be like Ted Turner. Mostly dead. <laughs> Brian Lewis, New York, po- New York Post, Brogdon, Sarich, and then Embiid. Sorry, your team sucks. <laughs> Calvin Watkins, ESPN. Probably why they don't put you on air. Charles Gardner, Milwaukee Journal, Sen- 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 Sentinel, Brogdon. Too bad your team sucks. <laughs> Chris Broussard, Fox Sports. That's why ESPN fired you. <laughs> Chris Webber, Turner Sport. Uh, Chris Webber didn't vote in <laughs> <laughs> Just because your time sucked in Philly doesn't mean you have to still hold a grudge. David Aldridge, Turner Sports. God, I really like David Aldridge. This one hurts. I like David Aldridge. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only reason I like David Aldridge is because he gets the best pop interviews because pop respects him. But all respect lost, David Aldridge. You voted Brockton. All right, so we got David Chinelato. He's it's a La Gazzetta dello Sport. So he voted Brockton Sarge healed. <sighs> Come on, man! How you not gonna put Hernan Gomez there? <laughs> the foreigners gotta stick together. And beat, you know, come on, and beat Hernan Gomez, and then Sarge. That should be your top three. I guess Buddy Heels from Bahamas. I'll give him, I'll give him credit there. <laughs> Dennis Scott, Turner Sports. Turner Sports should be shut down. <laughs> Doris Burke. Ugh. Oh, she put. Not Doris. She put Brogdon, Sarge, and Heald. Oh, Doris. I was always on Doris's. Uh, I was always on her side, because Drake was hitting on her. I was like, Doris, you can do better. Drake, you can do better. <laughs> Doug, Con- Doug Collins. Oh, yeah, I heard about this one. <laughs> I hope Northwestern doesn't win a game next year. <laughs> There's a lot more I can say, but I'm going to go with the uh, the most pop culture answer. <laughs> Doug Haller, Arizona Republic. Oh, man. Too bad the Suns suck. 
Doug Smith. Uh, tri- we lost Chris. Lissa. Yeah. <laughs> um, Doug Smith, the Toronto star. He put healed in there. Uh, Toronto guys aren't voting total. What's going on? Yeah, really. <laughs> too bad. Uh, too bad. Kyle Lowry's gonna be a spur. <laughs> Eddie Sefko, Dallas Morning News. He put Yogi Farrell in as the third vote. This dude's got to stop smoke with Mark Cuban. <laughs> Ernie Johnson, Turner Sports. Oh God, shut down Turner. I don't even want. I don't want Turner to be around anymore. Love Ernie Johnson. Hate that he voted Brogdon. Turner Sports NBA coverage should just be a boxing match between Barkley and Shaq. <laughs> All right, Frank Blindberry, NBA.com. He let he put in Hernan Gomez third. Frank Iasola. Brogdon Sarge healed. Oh, come on, Iasola. Yeah, the problem I got with Iasola is that he does not give enough mellow la la coverage, and I think that's the most important thing this offseason. <laughs> Dead to me. Gary Washburn, Boston Globe. Your team sucks. Danny Ainge is a bitch. Danny Ainge is a bitch. Uh, Howard Beck, Bleacher Report. How did Bleacher Report get How a did vote? Bleacher Report get a vote? <laughs> that's, all, that's all I can say there. J. Michael Falgust? Falgust? CSN Washington. No way. No way. He put Rodney Magruder on his list. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. All right. Jason Jones, Sacramento B. Pick swap. Pick swap. <laughs> Who do you have third? Jalen Brown finished third on his list. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Jeff Zilgit, USA Today. Jesus. If you keep voting like that, it'll be USA Tomorrow, because it'll be done. Joe Freeman, the Oregonian. Do they even have basketball in Oregon? Portland, I guess. Yeah. yeah. They, haven't been, they haven't been good in a while. Bring back Aldridge and... Big Z. Joe Schumann, NBA.com. Joke. John Barry, ESPN Radio. You know what? I, I can't believe that What's-His-Face doesn't have a vote. Ryan Rossillo. Let's get some uh, let's get some good names on here. We need some... Let's get Danny Canelo vote. We, yeah, we need better vetting. Yeah, we need better vetting process. All right, John... If Bleacher Report can get a vote, Rossillo yeah. deserves a vote. <laughs> all right there's just so many names here so what i'm gonna say basically on the wrong side of history yeah if you wrote it not Embiid, a lot of respect lost i really can't believe this at all michael wilbon hasn't watched basketball in like years i swear michael wilbon pissed me off during the draft he i don't think he watches basketball i don't think he does considering he said something along the lines of like Vets need to tell young players when to nap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Wilbon, what drugs are you on? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go through the rest of the names, but there is some good ones. I retweeted this. I'll tweet it again. Uh, my girl, Ramona Shelburne, she knows what's up. She voted Embiid. Rachel Nichols voted Embiid. You know, just got to... There's some people that get it. A lot of people just don't. Just because you play a lot of games doesn't mean you're the best rookie. I'm sorry. Just because you were a role player in college and fit that role in the NBA don't mean shit. Ah, Mark Jackson voted Brogdon. Oh, probably why the Mark Warriors Jackson. got probably why the Warriors got better after they fired him. I wanted him back on back with the Knicks now. Now I don't. <laughs> He's on the wrong side of history. I can't believe Woj doesn't have a vote. Really, Woj doesn't have a vote. Not that I don't think so. I didn't see his name. So again, some guy at Bleacher Report can get a vote. But not the guy who everybody goes to for trade breaks. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple ESPN guys that are losing their jobs to Woj. Yeah. <laughs> I have votes. <laughs> so, but all right. So, any any more on the poster child you got? Any other guys? Um, Colin Jenkins. Oh, that is a good one. So we'll try and get four for each sport. Basketball's a little tough. I know we said Alexi Chavez earlier. Alexi Chavez. 
I know Willie Hernan Gomez, like I said before the show, was drafted by you guys. I think that was the twenty the pick the draft where you got the twenty and ten guy. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, everyone who's listening, fans, feel free. Give us anyone you want. Either tweet at me or Lewis or DM us or DM our account. Tweet at the account i ninety five podcast. We're looking for just any names possible. We'll yes. me and Lewis, especially will, basketball. <laughs> yeah, me and Lewis will go through them. We'll look at them. We'll try and get four for each sport. We'll have everyone vote on them, and then we'll get a final four. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I mean, I know obviously we have Embiid on the front. Um, I don't know what did you put in New York guys on the cover photo? Ah, uh, Syndergaard's in there. Yeah, Syndergaard. So I mean, but. I just think when you look at I-95 podcast, you got to think of a guy that fits us. So if you listen from the Monday Night Light days, a guy that fits who we are, as well as being a guy that played for both teams. Right now, I <laughs> I gulp as I say it, but I think Alexi Chavez fits, our, fits us Alexi the best. Alexi Chavez probably fits. <laughs> yeah. Yager's, Yager's too good for us. Uh, yeah, Yager's too good. Uh, Pedro Martinez was pretty good um, for both of our teams. I mean, I know he had that year with, like, a 5 ERA. Lenny Dykstra is too crazy for us. Yeah. Like, I don't even, like, Lenny Dykstra, like a good, like a normal, not-so-hectic night for Lenny Dykstra is, like, my crazy night. Brian Uh, Schneider played for the Phillies and Mets. Oh, Brian Schneider, that's right. Brian Schneider may be in the lead now, actually. (laughs) <laughs> but like Aaron Asham, he's been in more fights in the last like twelve hours that I've been in my entire life. <laughs> uh, Brian Mitchell, I could see I could see Brian Mitchell being us. I mean, he was just like that. Good, he just had one good punt return a year, and we'll probably have one good podcast here. Yes. Uh, Colin Jenkins, eh, he's whatever. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to think if there's any others. Like it's it's rough. <laughs> I already know someone's gonna be uh, Ruben Randall. Ruben oh, Randall. that's right. Oh, he got he got cut in training camp. He, got cut. <laughs> he didn't make it that far. Um, but I mean, when you look at it overall, there's gonna be some names that people are like, you for, obviously forgot that guy, and I'm like, wow, we obviously forgot that guy. But yeah. please, Steve. what? Steve Smith. Steve Smith, yes. Oh, man. That guy. All right, so we got some good names. Definitely need more basketball. Yes. But um, please. Yeah. <laughs> please hit us up. Tell us who it is. We'll try and get the poll out um, as soon as possible. But we just I thought it would be a lot of fun. Some interesting thing to do. Um yeah, and so right now we got Lenny Dykstra, Martinez, Aaron Asham, Yager, Brian Mitchell, Colin Jenkins, Alexi Shved, Brian Schneider, and Steve Smith. <laughs> I tell you, that is a... That is a oh, hard. Billy Wagner! Billy Wagner, yeah. Love Billy Wagner. If Billy Wagner wins, we're going to have to do the whole show with like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of whatever <laughs> in the side of our mouth. <laughs> that was insane. That was more impressive than the way he threw. Yes. So. But we'll leave the podcast there. Hope you enjoyed the first I-95 sports podcast. Um, it'll be obviously a little shorter than our two-hour shows uh, for Monday Night Lights that we did live at school and post on YouTube. Um, but give us your feedback. Tell us how you like it. it we're working on getting it on iTunes, Spotify, um, but we'll put our first couple episodes on SoundCloud and YouTube just so they're easy to find. Same YouTube channel as Monday Night Lights. We're just switching over the names. Um, You got anything else, Lois? Nope, I got nothing. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time.